to the Daily Exchange New York edition. We're here talking about Grin, Beam, Mimma Wimble, and recounting everything that happened over the break. Welcome back, guys. We'll see you guys uh, right after this. All right, guys, welcome back. We're here back. We've been back uh, about away for about two weeks now. Uh, we're here in New York City. We're in the Finder office. I've brought my little bear from uh, Colorado. This is a little skier. He's a, he's a, look at that head. Come on, that's like cute. Uh, and as, you know, Buffett said, uh, pretty much um, wanted to, to flag, you know, obviously we've been in this down market, but he said, as when the tide goes out, you can find out who's naked and who's not. And I think in 2019, we will find that out from a lot of projects. Uh, biggest recap now, just going to give you guys a bit of recap over what happened over the break. Uh, obviously, you know, we have seen a down uh, in prices and we're, we're, we're trading at about $3,560 US per Bitcoin is changing hands. Uh, and um, Bitcoin turned 10. It's kind of cool. Uh, Joel, here we got a bit of a birthday cake. We should celebrate with a bit of cake. There we are. 2008 to 2018. Uh, the first block was mined uh, early in the afternoon uh, on January 3rd. About 50 uh, Bitcoin were, were, were rewarded, uh, which would trade hands at about $183,000 today. Uh, and then there was this British Times sort of imprinting or encoding. Uh, I think, Joel, you've got a, a little uh, a piece for us there. Um, you can see um, Chancellor and Brinker of second bailout for banks. There's been a lot of speculation over time about this, but you know, potentially this is a nod to the economic factors that made decentralized digital currency uh, such as Bitcoin necessary. You know, I'm calling this and I'm titling this now open source money. Bitcoin is open source money, something that people uh, and banks or someone else can't actually do or take away from anyone. It's a bit like BitTorrent. You can't shut it down. Um, and I think Bitcoin's that, that thing. And I think it's a great use case. It's a great thing. It's going to continue on forever. It's something that you know, we needed to hedge um, this new form of money or what, what we have today uh, in Bitcoin. So good to be here. And uh, it's definitely created this industry. Uh, Ethereum Classic had a 51% attack. Uh, now, a few different things happened here. There was about a double spend attack about $1.1 million uh, of double spending. Uh, and then there was this sort of return of $100,000 of Ethereum Classic to an exchange onto gate.io. Uh, and then these weird $200 transaction fees, which we think potentially, you know, was these miners creating all this hash power and uh, they were picking up all the, uh, all, the, all, the, all, the, all the all the block wins and that was circling the money through. Andrew Munro did a, a lot of our, our lead crypto journalists here, did a lot of digging into that. Uh, and you can see his his article, which we can we can post uh, in the description later. Uh, and a, so so the thing was that a lot of the mining pools uh, weren't picking up this extra hash power. It was just anonymous users just dumping all this hash power into Ethereum Classic. Uh, and uh, Kevin Rook uh, had a very hilarious observation in that during this time, uh, Ethereum Classic went down 16.7 percent, but Ethereum only went down 23 went, went down 23.7 percent so ethereum classic got 51 percent hacked but outperformed ethereum i don't, I don't know I just, I... joel we've been talking about ethereum classic now what like like every single day yeah. uh i don't know i don't know how to deal with that ethereum classic is just like it gets hacked and then it outperforms. That's that's next level. That's 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 anyway. Backed the physically settled cryptocurrency uh, future has been delayed again. Uh, there is speculation that uh, potentially the U.S. government shutdown uh, affected that. Uh, so uh, its its release date was on the twenty fourth of January. 
uh, and uh, potentially that has been pushed back. Now, the thing is, it's got to release a 30-day uh, request for comment and all those kinds of things, and it hasn't been able to do any of those things because the CFTC is potentially being uh, closed uh, because of the government shutdown. Now, bad things have happened potentially with a Bitmain. Uh, the co-CEO, Jihan Wu, and his uh, fellow Keshwan, Keshwan Zan, Keshwan Zan, I like that name. Uh, massive restructuring, about a third of their workforce, which they have 3,000 people, could be uh, uh, laid off. So it's about 1,000 people. Uh, obviously, they've engaged in a massive uh, Bitcoin cash uh, hash war, which potentially set this off as well. And obviously, the bear market um, has um, been quite an issue uh, with, uh, with all of the mining and, and things that have taken place. Um, it's saying that artificial intelligence and machine learning chips are potentially where it's going to look and uh, not focus as much on crypto hardware. Uh, now, obviously, if Bitmain was to exit aggressively, they would potentially sell a lot of cryptocurrency coins and this could really set off the market in a very interesting trajectory. Um, have a look at prices now. We're trading, changing hands, Bitcoin, $3,560. Ethereum at $117. EOS at $2.36. Ripple at $0.32. Cents. Tron at $2.5. Cents. Litecoin at $30.95. Ethereum Classic at $4.32. The old Ethereum Classic. Question, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. Binance Coin as well, trading at $6.44. Very interesting. A lot of movement happening in the Binance camp. Uh, 10x up about 20% as they've launched their card now, apparently. And Maker and Nexo and Rep seem to be down quite a bit uh, recently. Um, and uh, obviously a lot of news around Rep with Veil uh, launching up on top of it, um, which is a basically a better UX system for the prediction markets, which I think is a very interesting uh, sign because it's because using rep is quite difficult as it stands right now. Um, in terms of Bitcoin, you know, we were tr- we we sort of, I guess we moved up and down quite a bit over the break. Uh, four thousand, we hit a crossover th- four thousand, went back down. Now, what's interesting right now, if you bring up a graph here, Joel, of um, Bitcoin, we've had some of these sharp moves up and sharp moves down, but you know, in the net sense, kind of trading sideways. I think. You know, I think we've got a little Bart Simpson there, wouldn't you say, Joel? Yeah. The old Bart Simpson's back. Um, you know, that, that the head and shoulders. Uh, prices obviously have dropped ever so recently, uh, uh, just in the last, uh, you know, 24 hours on Bitcoin. We've got a second graph here. Um, some commentators are a bit worried about potentially the price trying to touch down that sub 3000 uh, Mark, again, who knows, you know, but it is definitely, uh, I don't think we are out of the uh, bear market as such. Um, but um, we've got another graph here. If you zoom out back to the monthly view, um, you know, here, what's interesting is that potentially uh, people are looking at the price of, of Bitcoin being the lowest, so they're seeing this new trend, the Bitcoin price being the lowest around the middle of the month. Um, so given this weekend it dropped again, potentially, is that the low for the month? Not sure. Um, the other thing that's very interesting right now is that daily volatility is way down. It's about $50 uh, moving around. That Omar Godbol suspects the low volatility to continue. Uh, he's from Coindesk, and Josh Rager claims that after several days of sideways activity, Bitcoin normally makes a move of around two hundred dollars or so. Uh, so we'll see how traders uh, respond to that. Talking about Ethereum now, the the um, delay of Constantinople, so this major fork update, uh, was a pretty big uh, hit. We had a big rise in Ethereum uh, before. Uh, and now you can see it's sort of pulled back. Um, look at this, the monthly chart as well. Joel, if you want to bring that that one up. Um, we've got, you know, it was a pretty rough December. Uh, we re- But then we rose back up. Uh, and now we kind of, you know, are, are sort of trickling down potentially, going sideways. Um, 
We did have before that big crash in December, you know, that $200 mark was where Ethereum was at. But now uh, trading at $117 uh, right now, it just seems like the market's ever so quiet right now. Very quiet. Uh, the Constantinople fork uh, has been rescheduled to the 27th of uh, February as well, looking at block 7 million two hundred and eighty thousand uh now there's a couple of issues here many uh, there's been a couple of nodes that actually rolled out constantinople and so there's going to be actually two forks rolled out or a patch for the old one um so a two version fork two version fork i love two version forks um so there's a patch uh and then there's the actual fork itself for all the nodes to pick up um I guess this could potentially, or you know, uh, lead to three different coins being run uh, at the same time, which will be an interesting moment. Um, the difficulty right now, what's happened is, given that some are running Constantinople, they can't go back. Uh, but they have it has slowed down Ethereum and how it runs ever so slightly, um, about about one second or so uh, until the fork is activated. So the twenty seventh of February, Constantinople delays. Uh, obviously, the difficulty bomb, and the difficulty bomb is uh, what's hoping, you know, something that will move us from uh, proof of work to proof of stake. And uh, if we, you know, that's not delayed, then, you know, a pre launch of proof of stake is not a good, good thing. Um, now, there isn't actually a, uh, a solution or a defined solution yet for proof of stake with Ethereum, it's still running on proof of work. And if this, if this difficulty bomb was to go off, it would trigger what's called a ice age of Ethereum, where things would just grind to a halt. Um, now, there's a whole lot of things in Constantinople that we can talk about, but we're just gonna, we'll, we'll leave that for another episode, guys. We will come back to that. Uh, James Aus, uh, writer here, producer, he is putting together a, a piece around this as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, moving on to talk about Stellar. Uh, Stella's been recently included in uh, Grayscale's uh, uh, digital asset groups made a new uh, uh, investment vehicle for Stella. Uh, previously, uh, Grayscale's invested in Coinbase, Coindesk, Ripple, and even partnered with Amazon to launch several blockchain uh, solutions. Um, now, IBM Worldwire has been uh, constructed on top of uh, or, or constructed to use Stella, uh, they will be rolling out some other uh, features in terms of working with Ethereum. So their stablecoin currently runs on Stella and can be can, can run through that. Uh, it, it's kind of like it sits above the blockchains and it makes it stablecoin and it runs and it sort of takes it out. Uh, so it's got Stella running and working like that and then it's got, we'll have uh, Ethereum doing the same thing. Uh, obviously, potentially, you might use Hyperledger in the future as well. Um, now, now this is very interesting because um, you know when Grayscale's got a purportedly like a huge amount of uh, the Bitcoin supply, and so starting up and getting the uh, Stellar uh, supply as well could be very, very, very big news and uh, very interesting. Now, let's talk about the big topic today: uh, Mimble Wimble. What is Grim and what is Beam? Uh, let's talk about the, the protocol first. So, so Mimblewimble is the protocol. Um, and basically, Mimblewimble was taken uh, from some of the earliest features of Bitcoin uh, and removes a few, it added a few in, uh, put a little fresh twist in, and it's served with a brand new, lightweight and familiar privacy drink. <laughs> privacy coin. Now, this new coin is... Um, uh, which is built on top of it, is Grin or Beam. Grin being a decentralized, uh, written by a, a pseudonym, just like uh, Bitcoin was. Um, it's Tom Elvis Jude, Judusor. Judusor? Judusor. And apparently it's a, a French name for one of the characters in Harry Potter. Now, Mimble Wimble as well, it's a spell from Harry Potter that um, is used to tongue-tie its victims, which is, again, really interesting. Now, Mimblewimble was actually a proposed improvement to Bitcoin, right? But it was launched as a separate protocol. So there's, there's the protocol layer of Mimblewimble, and then Grim 
and Beam are running on top of Mimblewimble, the actual protocol itself. Mimblewimble prevents information from being revealed by the victim of the spell by causing the tongue to temporarily curl backwards upon itself. So let's talk about what is Mimblewimble, right? Let's get really into it. It's a protocol, right? It's not a cryptocurrency. That's really important. It, it is not Grin and it is not uh, Beam. It is the, the technological foundation. Uh, and new coins can obviously be built on that. Now, that's very interesting because anytime a protocol has been developed, new coins have spawned off the back of it. Um, and, you know, I guess just looking back, we've got um, different uh, 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 protocols in the past. So SHA-256 algorithm is what Bitcoin runs on. It's also what Bitcoin Cash, Factum, and uh, Peercoin uh, run on. Uh, and obviously, unfortunately, most SHA-256 coins have actually gone um, and they've sort of fallen out of popularity. Uh, Bitcoin technology obviously is a little bit on the outdated side, but it still continues on. Um, and then we've got SHA-256 came, and then afterwards we had Script, S-C-R-Y-P-T, uh, Litecoin and Dogecoin both, both uh, currently run on that. Um, and then we have the new one, which is Mimble Wimble, right? which is a privacy protocol. Um, and there aren't too many privacy protocols out there, right? Um, particularly um, ones that are written, uh, non-private ones, so public ones written by, you know, uh, pseudo um, nim name people. So it, it kind of dates back or touches back to a similar way that Bitcoin was written with Satoshi Nakamoto being the, the pseudonym. Um, now, the other protocol, or one famous one out there, is uh, ZeroCoin protocol used by Zcash, Pivx, and Zcoin. Now, uh, ZeroCash protocol also is out there as well, which is very similar. Uh, and we've had that in the previous show. Um, you can have a look up our, our show there with Zcoin. Um, and then you've got the, the last privacy one, which is Crypto Note protocol, which Monero uses. Um, now there is the other, uh, uh, and then there is, uh, there's, there's one, uh, which was a Bitcoin fork dash, uh, which uses its own protocol X 11 protocol. Uh, and it was implemented, uh, last year. Now, um, what's interesting about this is Mimble Wimble is potentially producing a protocol, which allows the creation of coins, which are sort of better, faster and totally private. So can you have a better, faster, totally private Bitcoin? Which is kind of interesting, very interesting. And it's got a lot of people excited in the market. Uh, a lot of people, in fact. Um, now, obviously the value of, 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 of uh, blockchains is a lot, but think about the value of protocols, right? A new protocol itself can create a whole sets of, of blockchains and new coins. Um, now, how does Bitcoin, how does Bimbo work? That's, that's a, it's an interesting uh, topic. So the most important thing is that transactions don't reveal addresses. The amount sent doesn't reveal how much is sent. And despite all of that, it can still be verified by proof of work mining. So, so, so let's go back. You can't see the transaction address. You can't see how much was sent, but still proof of work, which is one of the, probably the safest forms of consensus right now still runs and people can still gain consensus of the blockchain and all the different nodes can can, can be sweet, right? Um, good little screenshot here. Uh, Pedro Febrero has written a fantastic guide on CCN. Uh, I'm not sure, Joel, if you got that there. It's got four key things about uh, Mimble Wimble. Um, one is the elliptic curve cryptography. Um, it's the same public key encryption used in Bitcoin. The second one is the confidential transactions. Uh, so this is the, the name given to, I guess, the magic that hides all the, all the, all the, um, the transactions and information. Uh, coin joins, which again, groups together transactions to make it harder or obfuscate more of the trans transactions. So it's harder to see what's going on. And the fourth component is Dandelion, which is the type of gossip protocol, which makes communication between the nodes and the network more private. So those four things are what make Mimblewimble so good. Um, and so incredible, right? This private Bitcoin, if that makes sense. Uh, if Bitcoin was a success, if Bitcoin was a success, but potentially could it be integrated back into Bitcoin? 
there is some speculation out there. Uh, Jimmy Song and Andreas Antonopoulos think it could be actually a valuable and viable side chain for Bitcoin. Uh, we've got Jimmy Song joining us back on the show. Uh, in, um, so if you have any questions, uh, that's later this week. Uh, Jimmy will be joining us. And if you have any questions about Mimble Wimble, please save the questions for then. And um, you know, make sure you comment below. And I'm sure we'll ask Jimmy all about uh, that. Now, you know, as I said, Mimble Wimble is potentially a lighter weight, more scalable uh, uh, than, than Bitcoin itself. Um, given that, you know, Bitcoin is, you know, I guess quite slow, uh, this might be able to produce faster coins. Now, we've got this new one, what is Grin? Uh, so Grin launched uh, less than a week ago, and then we've got what is, you know, Beam. Beam is another coin launched on Mimblewimble a fortnight earlier. Now, the two different things here is that um, Grin is obviously a, a privacy coin, um, and so is Beam. But there is one major, major difference. Um, Grin is constructed in a uh, decentralized uh, way uh, in that it has, just like Bitcoin, a pseudonymous, pseudonymous person uh, that's, that's actually um, created it. And it has no pre-mine and no corporate agenda. Whereas Beam has a very central structure you know, it has um, um, investors, a team, management structure, all those kind of things. So it's, I guess, more of a, of a centralized organization. Um, and um, now what's interesting right now that's come out, and, 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 and our resident journalist, Andrew Under again, has, has done a lot of work around this, is that the initial mining hardware potentially around this, as reported by Primitive Ventures, is potentially being around $100 million dollars. Um, and this may potentially be the most expensive Genesis block ever mined in history. There's a lot of interest around this green coin. Check it out. Um, now, if you have a look at it, um, you know, uh, early buyers of, uh, of green obviously could have benefited from this, but also potentially could have been hurt. Uh, I'm sure we've got this quote here, um, Joel, in terms of the, uh, our, of, of Andrew, um, a bit more, you might have to read. Yeah, so potentially what we've got is, um, yeah, I guess early buyers uh, could be hurt because there's such a big mining investment behind it in that they need to sell their coins. They're probably not going to hold on to them. Or are they just going to hold on to them and just see where Grin goes? This is what's uh, very interesting. And we're going to have a look at the price action as well uh, now. Uh, on the launch, we saw, in fact, a all-time high of, uh, and it, it's not on this graph, but we saw an all-time high of $261.65. Uh, there was a, a coin that changed hands. That's pretty expensive. Uh, it's currently trading right now at, what do we have here? Two, two sorry, $3.05, and five cents, up 29% in, in the last 24 hours. Um, and you can see, yeah, it's sort of started this climb back up um, because it is, it is a, quite a hot coin. Um, now, there is a bit of speculation right now that there's been some very interesting trading taking place on, um, on Grin and um, with the exchanges looking at some very suspicious wash trading that's taken place. Dovey One of Primitive Ventures posted this tweet. I'm not sure if we've got this um, uh, picture here of her tweet. Um, we do. Awesome. Um, in that there has been, you know, potentially central, some centralized exchanges have manufactured grin out of thin air. Um, now, some people are saying that these are IOUs that are created on exchange and eventually they'll be settled out. But some, you know, there's just almost, I guess, too much uh, grin that sort of changed hands. And um, even, even the thing is that it takes, I think, four days like after the Genesis block for the actual coin to get there. And so exchanging it couldn't have taken place uh, in the very start. And unfortunately, that's what we saw. Uh, and there's a lot of people out there that potentially see this as fractional reserve trading. 
uh, or fractional reserve uh, banking of coins by exchanges. And, and obviously, this is the whole purpose of cryptocurrency and, and where Bitcoin started. And that's why people uh, are very concerned about this and where it potentially started. And it started this whole proof of coins movement as well. So a lot of exchanges wanting to know that they actually have the coins uh, or the keys for the coins that they uh, potentially have. Um, now, you know, there are no guarantees, but I do think this year, again, this will be something um, that will come out in the wash. You know, the tide's gone out and we'll see who's naked and who's not, who's got the coins and who doesn't. Um, now, let's talk about Mimble Wimble uh, working uh, and Beam running on top of it. How does Beam work? What is Beam? Uh, obviously, it's a private company, unlike its community-driven grin, um, and it doesn't have a synonymous contributor. It's much more of a polished, you know, management-run uh, business, um, which is very cool. Um, and it's got its team members, its advisors, and its investment partners. You know, it's 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 a good um, functioning uh, 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 blockchain uh, and cryptocurrency, um, which is cool. Um, and I guess the blockchain community has kind of thrown its weight, potentially you'd say more behind Grin than with Beam because of the decentralized nature uh, of um, Grin. In other words, you know, it's not some company behind the whole thing. Um, you know, and I think this, this sort of goes back to um, the, the Halcyon days of uh, Bitcoin and how it started. And I think people are reminded of that and, you know, OG cryptocurrency people like that and they, they, they want they, they, they appreciate that um, which is very cool um, the thing is because there's two coins that have launched on Mimble Wimble both Grin and Beam this is very interesting because potentially they can both work together and help Mimble Wimble and then maybe eventually Bitcoin will you know swallow it up and reintegrate it back into its uh, cryptocurrency and, and, and um, that could be really interesting as well all right guys talking about on this day one year ago. Now, we've had some really interesting times over the last three months. Uh, and again, you know, what's really interesting is all the things that were taking place a year ago. Um, if you remember back in uh, January, I think I was in uh, London at the time at a blockchain event with all these ICO pitches coming in. It was incredible. Uh, I did my first uh, blockchain hackathon and I wrote my first um, Solidity script. So my first ERC20 token, um, which was really cool. Uh, and I figured out like what, what sort of what's going on and sort of got me really involved with this whole space. Um, exactly one year ago, The Guardian um, put out uh, economic, e economist predictions that, that Bitcoin had a long way to fall, which is, um, yeah, I guess it was, it was quite right on that. Um, at the time, it was trading around $11,600. But on the flip side, you've got CNBC, which just said, you know, they've got a more optimistic tone because ever so recently, uh, it just on that on that same time period shot up from nine thousand two hundred dollars to eleven thousand six hundred dollars. That's two thousand four hundred dollar swing. Two thousand four hundred dollars swing. That's that'd be like that. That's like Bitcoin almost doubling in, or moving in price, right? Um, compared to today. And I guess people aren't seeing, you know, we're not seeing that volatility right now. I think that's the major difference. We're not seeing that same kind of volatility. And, um, you know, it's making it very, very interesting. You know, will we ever see it again? That's the question. You know, is it like the internet uh, bubble when it bursts? Will we ever see that same uh, massive run up and rise just like with the internet? Who knows? Ripple was trading at $1.64 and Ethereum was swinging between $800 and $1,000. Woo! That's incredible. Uh, South Korean regulators were also about to shut things down. They did shut things down and they reopened it back up, which is really interesting. Um, and, um, you know, it was an interesting time. So let's, we'll see what happens this year as well. Um, in terms of uh, some interesting uh, views on Bitcoin, you know, obviously everyone looks at all time highs, but if you look at the all time uh, lows or yearly um, lows, Frog Frogopolis, has uh, on Twitter has put together this graph. Joel, if I'm sure you've got this tweet handy, uh, if you look at uh, the all time uh, or, or yearly lows over time, um, you can see potentially we are moving up. You know, but I guess the thing that I am thinking about is are we going to go see an all time 
low from like a 2014 to 2015? Are we going to go sort of down in 2019? You know, will we touch 2000? Will we touch $1,000 again? That is the question. Or even will we see a long period of, um, you know, not seeing an all-time high again? Um, that could be the case. I don't think Bitcoin's going anywhere. Um, that's for sure because there is a key use case in that it is a hedge against the current monetary system. That's why we're here. Guys, we are in New York. Uh, for this next two weeks, do subscribe, do press the little bell to be reminded when we are live, and we will see you guys tomorrow. Yeah.